Molly's mom dropped her off here at the pond on a sunny morning back in 2000, and she was never seen again. There have been many persons of interest in this case, DNA testing and boxes of evidence, but we still don't know who killed Molly or why. It's hard to believe it's been so long. Heather Bish holds on tight to the memories and photos in her phone of her little sister Molly, thankful for the last hug they shared on the morning she disappeared. I'm so grateful for that, those moments, because, um, you know, we get to hug her and, and kiss her and, and tell her I loved her. It's just hard to think 20 years has gone by. June 27, 2000, Molly Bish went to work for her lifeguard shift at Cummins Pond in Warren. Five investigates with the timeline of the morning that broke the heart of the Bish family forever. This is the last image of the 16-year-old before she vanished. At 9.50 in the morning, Molly and her mom Maggie head into a local convenience store. They check in at the police department and pick up her radio six minutes later. At 9.58, Molly arrives at Cummins Pond. She sets up her chair, and minutes later, she's gone. Her shoes still on the beach, her lifeguard kit open. It indicates there was maybe some sort of emergency that someone feigned. I fear, yeah, that they overpowered her. Everyone thought Molly had drowned. There wasn't any police tape put up for a while. Um, so a lot of things that normally, when you get to a homicide scene, you would, you would protect weren't protected. The crime scene was trampled on during the search. One theory, the suspect parked his car in the cemetery up the hill from the pond for a quick getaway. Could have been someone who knew the area. It appears that it could have been. Um, could have been someone who was watching her. Molly's remains were found in the woods a few miles away three years later. Investigators believe the answer to what happened is somewhere in the more than 60 boxes of evidence that is now being loaded into a database to help lead them to Molly's killer. The man in the white car who was lurking at the pond the day before, convicted killer Rodney Stanger, and many others have been eyed in the case. That one tip, that one break. The district attorney says crime scene evidence and DNA from several persons of interest continues to be tested. Hundreds of buckle swabs, you know, we've done with regards to people, lie detector tests, but we haven't solved it, so we continue to test. I cannot imagine losing a child in that way. It's evil. It, it's pure evil. I can't save my sister now, um, but I hope that we can find this person so that we can save others and that no other family has to go through this or, or talk about how much they miss someone 20 years later. Investigators are hopeful that advances in DNA technology will help them come up with a profile of Molly's killer. Molly's family says what keeps them up at night is the fact that that person is still out there and may harm someone again. Kathy Curran, Five Investigates.